Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you once again to this periodic sessions where we discuss uh, most important areas in IELTS, PTE, and then we brief you on some of the topical areas where we are supposed to get, we are supposed to know and understand how to uh, prepare ourselves, get us our documents ready, especially when it comes to study abroad and scholarship. It's very important that since we are all looking at several areas and certain points where we will get to, you know, uh, fulfill the dreams that we will want to achieve in, in, in various places, it's very important that we update ourselves periodically on certain areas that uh, I would say certain areas of concern because when it comes to travel, when it comes to work, when it comes to career building in other countries, there are several requirements that you are expected to meet. Now, today we're going to talk a lot about IELTS and the areas of scoring. Then we'll touch a little on, or we touch a bit on uh, certain things that we are supposed to know, certain proficiency tests that we are supposed to you know, get to understand and get to know its format so that we can also apply for scholarships and study abroad and all that. So the first thing that I want us to talk about basically is it has to do, sorry, it has to do with um, the areas of scoring. Now, when it comes to IELTS, there are several areas that you have to actually fulfill certain uh, requirements. So you must make sure that every aspect of the test that you are taking, every aspect of answer that you are given, it, it falls within a particular category for you to get the required band score that you need. It's very important we understand those um, areas of scoring and those areas of which they check to mark our test in order to pass or to get the band score that we need. Now we'll start with writing. Actually, let me go a bit about uh, on, on how the whole test is organized and the format of the whole test briefly. Now, when it comes to IELTS speaking test, now the test actually is in four areas. Now, those areas are the skilled areas that is expected to uh, test you on. You're supposed to be tested on your speaking level, your reading level, your listening skills, and then your writing skills as well. Now, all put together are the four major areas of uh, the English language. So if you are able to communicate in all these areas properly, then you are an expert user of the language. Hence, it is important that you have to understand what the IELTS exam itself is, the format as well as the areas of scoring. Now, as I already stated, there are four areas of scoring, four skilled areas of scoring. So we have speaking, we have listening, we have reading, we have writing. Now, in all, the test is expected to take between, you know, for the four aspects, if you are to sit for it at a go, and you are supposed to spend between um, three hours, 45 minutes, uh, sorry, two hours, 45 minutes to three hours. So the first aspect, which is the speaking test, the speaking test is in three parts. Part one is an, inter an interview format where you meet the examiner, you speak, you talk to the examiner, the examiner will ask you questions, basically a conversation between yourself and then the examiner because if the examiner is asking you certain questions, you are expected to also, in effect, respond to those questions. But whilst you are res responding to those questions, you, there are several areas that they will check your your gestures, your speech, your pronunciation, and etc. on in order to give you or award you a particular band score. Now, of which after the format, we'll talk about the areas of scoring. Now, that is speaking test part one. That is the first part of the speaking test where the examiner will ask you several questions, will ask you uh, things about yourself. Mostly they are familiar things, things that you know you have access to already, things that you know already about your hometown, your family, uh, your hobbies, work, school, all these are familiar things and then you are expected to provide an answer within the areas of scoring. That is part one. Part two is termed as the long run or people say Q card. Sometimes they call it a task card. Now it is a task card because the examiner will give you or hand you a task where you are supposed to 
fulfill now fulfilling the task means that you're supposed to read the question that or the task that is given to you understand the task and then you, you you talk about the task in this case you are not going to write neither are you going to do but you are going to speak it that is the speaking test so part two which is the long run the task the examiner will give you a task and will give you a sheet of paper and a pencil now you are expected to use one minute to prepare yourself to talk about the task or achieve the task that is how come you have a pencil and a, and a paper so that if you want to write something down if you want to jot down certain points whilst you are you are talking about the task you can jot it down within the one minute that is given to you now after the one minute you will be given two minutes to talk about it so in the first place the task is given to you or handed to you and a sheet of paper and a pencil is also handed to you that is if you want to write down something so an example if the task is about uh, an uh, an, exp uh, an, an experience that you've had in a shopping mall and it means that you can list down certain points although the task that is given to you have its own instructions that is supposed to you are supposed to but that's that is supposed to guide you in order to fulfill the task so that is the the speaking test part two the long run where task given one minute to prepare Two minutes to talk about the task so after one after preparing for the one minute uh, maybe jotting down certain points that you think you, you will be necessary or will guide you to actually express yourself well then you can use your two minutes to talk about the task now that is part two and the last part of the speaking test which is part three most of the time all of the time, all of the time actually it's a follow-up of what question was given to you or the task that was given to you in part two so for instance if uh, in part two the task that was given to you was like uh, was about maybe a shopping mall then it means that you are going to ask or answer questions on shopping mall you are going to be asked questions and you are also going to answer questions on shopping mall or shopping or anything that has to do with uh, shopping if it is about dental experience, eh, you're going to have questions on that. If it is anything that, any topic that is given to you, definitely, you are going to have certain uh, questions that are related to the task that was given to you in part two. So that particular part, which is the third part of the speaking test, is also just like, an, just like the part one, where you have an interview format. The examiner will ask you a question you are supposed to answer. As for the speaking part three parts part one is an interview form where you talk about familiar things about yourself and then part two is the long run which is a cue card part three is a follow-up which is also in the same format as part one then you ask the examiner will ask you questions and you intend to answer so that is how you go about or the format of the speaking test so you know in the speaking test you are expected to spend between 13 to 15 minutes maximum so by 15 minutes time you'll be done with all the three parts now when it comes to the listening listening is different from uh, speaking now we, we spent 14 to 15 minutes in part one in, 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 in the speaking but in listening we are going to spend 30 minutes now, in the 30 minutes, you are expected to answer 40 questions in the 30 minutes. Now, 30, 30 minutes, 40 questions. But the 40 questions are in four different sections. And then you are also going to listen to four recordings in that regard. In the first one, which is uh, the first section, section one, you are going to listen to a recording between uh, two people. That is going to be a dialogue where two people will be having a conversation. So, your, your, myself and then uh, maybe my, my colleague, it could be a lecturer and a student, it could be a, a father and a wife, or a father and a son, a husband and a wife, that kind of thing. So, you have a conversation. Or you will listen to a recording between two people which is a dialogue now with section two section two is mostly about just a person 
one person giving a report on something so it could be a tour guide who will be explaining something or explaining or trying to describe a tourist site to tourists so that is one person describing a particular event particular area somebody talking about something so that part two or section two for the listening test is also a monologue not a dialogue now the third part which is the third recording is normally between two or more people so it is not just like the first one where you talk about it's just between two people but part three is normally between two or more people sometimes it could be between three students or three friends who will be talking about their future plans and then all of that and then it could be about uh, between uh, maybe a lecturer an administrator and a student they will be having a conversation in relation to maybe uh, their, their work their studies and all that or it could be a family who may have gone on, on, on a vacation and may have been they'll be seated somewhere having a conversation or it could be anything so the conversation is between three two or more people that's for the section three recording three the third recording for the section three now the final section which is section four and then the fourth recording for the section four you're going to also have a monologue where it is just one person describing an event just like it was in the recording two or the section two so it's just like this as i'm here talking about something talking about a particular topic describing an event you'll be in a museum the tour guide will be moving or you'll be in a library somebody will be giving a talk or you'll be in a lecture hall the lecturer will be giving a talk all that so it's mostly about somebody describing or reporting on something that is for the set for the third part uh, the last part of the listening test, which is section four now in all the or, or in all the four sections there are several tasks that you're supposed to fulfill you can have questions on diagrams you can have questions on uh, you know short answers fill ins and you can also have multiple choice so you always have to look at the various tasks you come you pair it with the information you are getting from uh, the audio you are listening actually you'll be given an, an audio gadget where you will listen and then you pay attention to the information on the recording that is being played then you base on that to answer the questions so one important thing in the listening test is that you don't only you don't only and always base your concentration or your focus on what you are listening but you are going to do three different things you are going to do listening you are going to do writing and you are going to do uh, reading because you will read the question you will listen to the audio and then you also do all of that so it's very important that whenever uh, you are taking the listening test you have to make sure your your senses are all erect and trying to capture but one other thing about the test is that you have to also understand there is no way you are going to fish the answers other than the audio that is being played it's very important that you listen carefully you pay attention to what is being uh, what is being played or what you are listening to focusing and concentration are the two things that you have to do because if you don't focus you might miss certain facts or you might make certain answers to the questions now the listening test also come with a diagram it could be a diagram where maybe it will be a process then you'll be expected to look at the process look at uh, listen to the recording and then fetch answers from the recording that is for the listening test four sections four recordings 30 minutes and 40 questions now when it comes to the reading reading test is just like our our traditional comprehension i normally compare that to it because it's exactly how it is where you'll be given a passage um, you'll be given uh, certain questions under the passage and you, you have certain time to answer the questions in this case with the reading test you are supposed to answer 40 questions and you're supposed to read third, uh, three different passages passage one passage two and passage three nanakosu i hope you are fine i hope to see you soon so you are supposed to listen to 
to uh, read three different passages and then out of the three different passages you have to also answer 40 questions under them but you know you know ielts is a timed test therefore you always must pay attention to the time and you have to work within the time so you are expected to spend 60 minutes on this particular uh, test which is three passages so in effect you are supposed to spend 20 minutes on each passage now once you are what you are expected to do is that you are supposed to read the passage understand the passage con digest certain keywords and information from the passage then you use those ideas to answer the questions that will follow it is very important that you know if you are not a fast reader you have to find several ways of making sure that you 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 are able to capture several information from the passage if you're not a very fast reader don't go and at or don't attempt reading everything other than that by the time you realize you will be spending all 20 minutes on one passage especially on on reading the passage so when you are with us when you come to archie links we'll give you certain tips and guidelines as to how to work within the time answer uh one passage within 20 minutes and answer all the three passages within the 60 minutes so it's important you pay attention to time because reading a whole passage sometimes you can have about thousand words in a passage you have you can have up to about six or seven paragraphs you are supposed to read all that and then one of the tasks that is given to you in the, the the reading test is that you can have questions on uh, multiple choice you can have a format in uh, true false and not given or yes no and not given you can also have fill in or short answers where you are expected to use about maybe not more than two words or something like that you have to also match paragraphs etc all these are some of the formats or some of the tasks that you are expected to get in the reading so the reading test is like this you have 60 minutes read through three different passages and then answer 40 questions but in effect you're supposed to spend at least at least 20 minutes on each you're supposed to spend a maximum of 20 minutes on each um, um, uh, each uh, passage so you know because of the time you must also work within you have to also apply certain skills and tips in order to be able to answer the various questions now let's go on to the writing uh, test so all the previous uh, the earlier skilled areas that I have mentioned they are all expected to test how you use the language so basically you shouldn't forget that whilst you are using you are doing all of that you are being tested on how it is used so you must make sure you do it within the areas of score of which we'll talk about very soon now the next part that i want us to also go through is the writing test writing test i have i find that one very very fascinating because especially with task one writing comes in two different tasks you have writing task one and then writing task two so the good thing about writing task one is that you know you'll be given a diagram how 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 interesting is that you will be given a diagram that diagram can be a graph it can be a map it can be a process it can be a uh, a chat it can it can also be uh, a combination of these these several diagrams so you can have a table and a chart you can have a graph in a table you can have a map and then and, and, and maybe another table or you can even have two maps two charts two tables so these are some of the things that you should be expected when it comes to uh, the writing task one of which you talk about the writing task too soon anyway so the writing task task one if when the moment the, di the diagram is presented to you you are expected to spend 20 minutes on the diagram you know the writing task also is in the, you have to spend 60 minutes in writing task but in task one it is expected that you spend 20 minutes on task one now as i said it's very fascinating because you have a diagram look at the diagram and write something or look at the diagram gather your information by looking at the diagram and then you write and that is one interesting thing about the writing task so you'll be pre presented with a diagram 
as I have stated, it can be a graph, it can be a map, it can be a chart, it can be a process, it can be anything or combination of any of these diagrams. So once that is given, then you look at the diagram, then you present your information in 150 words. You are supposed to write 150 words within 20 minutes. So you are going to do two things, study the diagram properly, and then report on the diagram using 150 minutes so that when i pick your write-up to read i will know exactly what you are what what you are describing before i even look at the diagram that is a very good essay because if you are writing a good essay you make sure that every paragraph is conclusive and then before i look at the diagram you are describing after going through your write-up i should have a pictorial view of what you have described that is a very good essay and that is what we will take you through when you come to Archilex. Now, so that is that for writing task one. So you're sp supposed to write 150 words within 20 minutes by describing a particular diagram. Okay, so what about task two? Task two is just like our traditional composition essay. Now, the composition essay is such that, okay, so write a letter to this, 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 and that, telling him or her about this. That is a traditional type of essay that we have. So in this case, you will be given a particular type of question or task. Now, the good thing about task two is that you are not going to look at a diagram, but you are now going to look at the task or the question that is given. Then you search around and you base on what has been given to you to capture your ideas to, to take the test. Now, one thing about the IELTS format is that, or the whole test is that, you have to try as much as possible to prepare in every task or every session. Make sure you prepare before you start, especially with writing and then reading. You have to prepare the points that you are going to write or describe before you put it on the question or the answer sheet. So it's very important you prepare. So. The format of the IELTS test in all the four areas is, is just as I have described. It's very important we look at that. Now, when it comes to speaking, speaking tests is, I know I always normally tell my students that, you know, speaking is just like we are going to have a conversation. I'm just going to British Council to have a conversation with someone. It gives you, it makes you relax a little bit because if you are tense, a lot of things can happen or can go wrong. Now, the areas of scoring when it comes to the speaking test is that because you are going to speak it, they will check your grammar, they will check your fluency, they will check your pronunciation, and then they will also check. You know, when it looks at, when you look at the three areas of the, the, the four areas that I have just mentioned, when, when they will check your grammar, they will check your fluency, pronunciation, and your vocabulary. When you look at all that, it means that whenever you are expressing yourself in English, you must make sure that you are fluent enough. Now, fluency, some, some in a relation, it has a relationship with a, a frequency, that is the speed at which you speak. But naturally, if you are not born to speak fast, don't rush it. And then when it comes to your vocabulary, actually, every topic that you discuss has a particular kind of vocabulary that is used to talk about. So the examiner could be asking you about education. The words that you use to describe education may be different from uh, when he or she asks you about uh, health. So you have to also have a variety of several lexical resource to put together in order to describe or talk about a, uh, or answer a question that is given to you. Now, when it comes to the areas of scoring for speaking, you have fluency, I would like to just state it again. Fluency, you have lexical resource, which is vocabulary, and then we have coherence as well as grammar. Now, grammar comes in, you know, the, 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 the rules that is applied when you are speaking English, and it has to do with your pronunciation. That is one thing that you must also look at. Now, it is important that anytime you are taking the, the test, note the areas of which you are going to be scored. Don't quickly jump to 
the practice test and start practicing or start watching videos if you watch videos on youtube or you watch or you you get hold of some materials that will help you to pass the test it has to first come with the areas of scoring then you get to have an understanding of what is supposed to be done now when it comes to writing tests you are supposed to have or you are supposed to first achieve the task now task achievement they check is that how you fully cover all the areas that the question has been put to you or how the all the areas that covers the the, the question itself so if the question is talking about uh, for instance in task one if it is a process where how cement is manufactured your ability to cover all these areas to fully describe or talk about the question or satisfy the question means you have achieved the task now when it comes to the uh, uh, writing the next area of scoring is coherence and cohesion now these ones are, they are sometimes mo mostly it has to do with organization and structure that is how you paragraph your writer you know you are supposed to basically because you are writing task one uh, 150 words you're supposed to structure or put your write-up into four uh, default paragraphs i say default because the paragraphs can is not necessarily or strictly has to be four but you can write it in more than four but the default it has to be four so how you make sure every paragraph is conclusive how you connect the, the previous ideas in the first paragraph to the subsequent ideas that you you, you also state in the, in the in the other write-up you must make sure that you fulfill the coherence and cohesion part in as much as you are fulfilling the task which is the first one you must make sure your paragraphing your linkages and then how you connect the various uh, the various ideas from the various paragraphs is very very important important now the next one obviously as we talked about in the speaking it is lexical resource lexical resources are they, as i said just like vocabulary exactly like vocabulary actually so you are supposed to have enough vocabularies in your pocket and in your palm so that you can easily have access to it but in ielts exam that one most important thing that you must do or i'll say must not do is to be using words you don't understand if you come up with words or you try to uh, bluff when it comes to using the language especially in speaking where you use big big words and you don't you are not very much familiar with the word you may either change the idea which will affect your task achievement which will also affect your lexical resource and might end up even affecting your grammar because the things that you will say may not be in in the same coherence with the task that is that is given to you so it is very important to look at that aspect so now reading aspect the reading test is also testing your ability to understand what you have read a, a, a written text that you are reading if you are able to understand a read text a text that you have just read then it means you can answer the various questions on it and then how you are you are able to pay attention to certain detailed information in a written text that is one thing that they look out for obviously we will still look at the lexical resources. We will still look at the task achievement. We will still look at your grammar. Because in reading, you are supposed to have several vocabularies. Now, one thing about the reading test is that you wouldn't use the vocabularies to express yourself. But, although it is applicable sometimes, but because sometimes the, the, the words that are used in the passage are different from the words that are used in the questions. You should have enough vocabularies which will circle around all that and will box all of this information in there for you to actually identify the information you are getting from the passage to answer the question. Now, that is to say that the reading test normally comes in two forms, where in, in, in the first part, in the first aspect, which is the first passage, it is easy for you to capture the information and then get the, the ideas from the passage. But when you, go, when you move on to the second and then the third, that is where you, they will need you to apply synonyms and then certain expressions so that you can understand 
the passage well because in in the question they can be using a particular word but in the passage they'll be using the same word but in a different form so for instance uh, show can be used in the passage but then in the question the question may be demanding for show but then the word that will be used will not be ex the exact word as uh, a show it may be illustrate or represent or something that is synonymous to that particular word so it is very important that you, you make sure you box enough vocabulary before you go on to take the test now you don't set, you don't just go and register and take the test you must go through all of these that we have discussed prepare yourself well and then make sure you have occupied all the areas of scoring in order to be able to go through the test successfully and get the bank score that you need now people say the test is difficult and i say the test is not difficult but it is engaging and then anything that is engaging you have to put in an extra effort and then we, we cannot describe it as a difficult nobody has ever failed the test nobody has ever passed the test so it means that you you don't have fail and then we don't have pass what will be passed for you will be a will be failure for someone what will be a failure for someone will be the vice versa so it is not necessarily that when you get a bound score of say 4.0 you have failed no it's not necessarily that when you get a bound score of 8.0 you have passed no whatever that you do you come with a, 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 a you know a, a standard you come or you, you take the test with a particular aim that you want to get a particular bound score then you work towards it if you want to get a 7.0 work towards the 7.0 if you want to get a 6.5 work on the 6.5 so most importantly no matter the bound score you want to get you will still have to work within the areas of scoring which is very 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 important because we dwell a lot on the areas of scoring because if we are able to get or you are, you get a, you get your hands on or it becomes so easy for you to capture the areas of scoring and get an understanding from there it becomes easy for you to pass the test now you build your your grammar you build your fluency you build your vocabulary and then you put all of that together the moment you sit in front of the test or you sit in front of the examiner to take the test when it comes to fluency you have already built yourself there when it comes to pronunciation you are there when it comes to grammar you are very good in that and that will help you to get the score that you need but it is not when you have the Cambridge Arts book 1 to 16 or what or 14 or whatever or 12 where you solve all the various questions in them that will make you pass sometimes it will even uh, uh, it just uh, discourage you to, to take it or it will just discourage you because one 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 end you will get about 38 out of 40 another breath you will get about 20 so you will definitely be discouraged gradually but look at the areas of scoring try to capture those areas understand those areas get a coach who will assist you to take the test and then you can now start practicing because it's just like the normal exam that we are going to write you don't just stand one day and then pick past questions and start you know practicing no you have to read learn the contents of the test you are going to take know the format of the test and then what you have learned you can practice it using past questions that is how you you prepare yourself for IELTS test exam and it's not only IELTS there are several types of proficiency exams now when you come to actually links we are mostly that's how the core our core mandate is just to work around study abroad and the nursing recruitment for now so and it has to do with anything that relates to travel we also uh, engage in that so when you want to travel to study there are several so many uh, uh, scholarship packages but as i always say every scholarship has its own uh, requirements and your ability to get or to be awarded the scholarship notwithstanding the percentage that will be awarded even if it is 10 percent it's a level of uh, you know burden has been taken away from you so if you are able to or they award you the scholarship then it means that that 
requirement that was stated you have been able to fulfill it so if for instance one of the requirements is for you to get a, a, an IELTS band score of 6.5 you cannot say that you don't you, you, you wouldn't work around that because you want to get the scholarship you have to work within those requirements so when it comes to um, study abroad here we have so many uh, options for anyone who want to study abroad and there's so many options in various countries and various uh, 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 schools so if you want scholarship depending on your credentials we will guide you through we will take you we will take you through the process we will assist you with the things that you're supposed to get sometimes uh, you know some of us we just decide we want to study abroad but we may not actually know exactly what goes into the study abroad and we want we may not actually know what we are supposed to do or what is expected of us so when we get to know what you are you want to achieve in in your travel maybe the, uh, the study that you want to study abroad maybe the job that you want to secure in, in, in abroad whatever that has to do with it we will definitely set you down take you through the process and then we'll let you understand we will take you through for you to understand and know the requirements that you are expected to meet so those of us who want scholarship scholarship normally most of the time it comes with requirements and then those requirements are highly related to proficiency exams so if you want a scholarship it can be stated in the scholarship requirement that you are, you are supposed to get an IELTS band score of say 8.0 or you're supposed to get a GR, GRE score of this you're supposed to get an SAT score of this whatever score that you are supposed to, and then the type of proficiency exam that you are supposed to take it will all be this designed or did, uh, stated in the requirement then you can work around those requirements and then finally uh, go through the test and then get the scholarship that you need now one other thing about the IELTS UKVI that I would want to talk about. Now, there is so many information. There's a lot of information, actually. So, so a lot of information go, going about when it comes to, especially we, the nurses, who would want to uh, work in UK. You know, people talk about the IELTS and then the standard IELTS and then the IELTS UKVI. Now, people want to know the difference. Now, one thing about the two different types of tests is that the standard IELTS and then the IELTS UKVI, the format, the structure, the areas of scoring, they are all the same. There is no difference between the IELTS standard and then the UKVI IELTS. Now, the, oh, okay, fine. There are, there are, there's, there's a difference. The only difference is that one is for UK immigration and visa application, and then the other is not. So, and then even with the IELTS, the standard, it is also accepted by some schools in UK. But if you want to work as a nurse in the UK, the only test proficiency test, which is an English proficiency test requirement that they need from you, is the UK VI IELTS. So whenever you are going to register for the for the test, you don't have to register for the for the normal st or standard IELTS because it will not be accepted. And then you will not meet the requirements since it has been stated that you are supposed to present an, uh, an IELTS UKVI proficiency. So we, the nurses who, who, who want to do, who want to practice general nursing or who want to do the carer jobs and all of that, we have to be mindful of the type of test that we register because the standard IELTS is not the same as a the IELTS UKVI in the eyes of UK, you know. So if you are really applying for a visa in UK, then you have to 
make sure that you take or you register for the IELTS UK VI. So those of us, we, all the nurses, the midwives, and then uh, the health workers who would want to work in UK, you must try as much as possible. Register the IELTS UK VI. And then so those of us who are even who would want to even, uh, apply for schools, based on the requirement that is stated by the school, if you are expected to register for IELTS UK VI, that is what you have to register. And then never think that they are the same. So the purpose for which this one will, 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 will fulfill will be the same purpose that the UK VI will fulfill. They are two different things, especially when it comes to UK. Now, when those of us who have already taken the, the UK VI test before, you realize that even the certificates are different. UK VI certificates is different from the standard or normal IELTS that we know. But don't forget that in the IELTS UK VI, we have the general test and then we have the academic test. Just as in the standard IELTS, we have the general IELTS and then we have the, the, the academic. So, as I said, the format, the areas of scoring, and then the skilled areas are the same. Just that one is designed specifically for uk visas and immigration and then the others is generalized so in this case if i want to apply for a school in in in, in, in germany i wouldn't need ielts uk VI. if i want to work in germany i will still not need uh, ielts uk VI, but i would need the normal standard ielts but if i am a student i am a nurse and i want to work in uk then I will have to register and take the IELTS test, which is specifically the UK VI. So all our nurses, all our health workers who are who, who are preparing themselves, who are going through their clearance, who are going through CBT classes, who are going through IELTS classes, go do, continue do all of that. Make sure you do all your preparations. But when it comes to your registration with the British Council for the IELTS test. Make sure you select the IELTS UK VI. Now, as I said, UK VI has academic and general. Now, I in my previous videos, I explained the purpose of the general and then that for the academic. So you have to know what you are going to do and then the type of test that you will register. Even if it is UK VI, you still have to register academic or general. And then if it is a standard, you still have to register academic or general. So I will say, I will state it once again that nurses, health workers who would want to work in the United Kingdom, UK, please, you have to make sure you register for the IELTS UK VI. So, as I said, there, there, there's no difference. Actually, there's no difference. So, the, the only thing is that, as I said, one is designed for UK and then one is for um, um, other countries. Now, one thing about this is that the UK VI is specific for a particular uh, home offices for the UK. So, you will not be able to have any... Uh, you not be able to take the test anywhere else other than British Council. So that's how come when you register for the IELTS UK VI, it is taken in British Council. That is the, the test center. But then the others, you can also have other several centers that you can also go and then just take the test. So please, um, we are all trying to work together to achieve the goals that we have set for ourselves, um, the goals that we have already arranged for ourselves, and then the things that we would want to do when it comes to career building, when it comes to uh, study, when it comes to work and all of that. So once we get to have the right information, then we get to know how to go about it. IELTS is not difficult. Anyone who will tell you that IELTS is difficult, the person is either trying to scare you away from the dreams that you have designed for yourself or the person is trying to intimidate you. So make sure that you have to 
you, you try as much as possible. Get more understanding. So you can contact Archilex anytime. Anytime. Call, call any of our numbers on our platforms or connect us, connect with us on any of our platforms, whether WhatsApp, YouTube, uh, uh, Facebook, anywhere, all the platforms. Just connect with us. Then we can have a conversation and explain things further to you so that you can have access to what you want. Now, Yes, somebody is asking if the you uh, so Nana, you said which one should we which one are we supposed to write? Is it the academic or the standard? So, as I stated, if you are going to work, since Nana, you are a nurse, and then that's what we are going to do, and I know what you are doing, we are supposed to register for the UK VI, not the standard, because. We are we the, what we want to do is we want to work in the UK and as I said the UK VI IELTS is designed specifically for those of us who would want to work in UK. So anyone who has already registered, who has already registered, maybe you've already registered for the standard IELTS without knowing that you are supposed to write the UK VI, you can still change your test format by sending a, uh, an email to the British Council for them to change the test that you register. Although the price or the cost of the IELTS UKVI is different from that of the other one. So definitely you will have to pay certain amounts in addition to what you have already registered. But do not write the IELTS, uh, the standard, if you want to work in UK. Try as much as possible to do that uh, to register for the UK VI. Now, let me also talk about or remind ourselves so because scholarship is just there for everybody. It's just there for all of us. So, you know, there are several schools in UK, Canada, US, Germany, Switzerland, and all, all other places where we can actually apply and get scholarship. And then those of us who would want to uh, work as well, there are several opportunities that you can also uh, hunt somewhere else. But then you have to make sure you hunt at the right places or you hunt with the right agency. Because at the end of the day, there are the, the whole traveling agency is saturated with people who are just there to take advantage of the, the how poised people are to travel. So you must try as much as possible to connect with an agency and then I, I wouldn't want you to, to look elsewhere or anywhere else other than the Achilles Travel Consult because that we are now accredited with British Council and then we are an agency that will, that organizes test and in classes or tutorials for them. We don't actually organize the test. The British Council organizes the test anyway. But with the tutorials, we are now accredited to organize this particular uh, tutorials on IELTS. Now, you know, it is very important that you try to connect with a credible agency, just as, as I have described, so that anytime you have an access to what you are supposed to do, it will be, wouldn't be too difficult, it will be as relaxed as possible. And then you also have the right to get several information and then the right information as well. So today has been a very successful day as well. Because really I'm, I'm excited excited because I have been able to or we have been able to discuss some various things about the proficiency exams, scholarships and then the things that we are supposed to know when it comes to the test. Now we are not only uh, interested in taking the test or you should not only be interested in going to British Council and writing the test but you should be interested in the content and the structure format of the test and then you also try as much as possible that you don't only look at the areas where we 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 the areas where uh, uh, people talk about but you have to also look at the areas which the British Council has stated specifically or the test itself is, is looking for to score you in order to get the, the uh, band score that you need. So this has been one of one of our, our sections and it has been an interesting section with you lovely people and I would like you to log on to our website www.actuallyengstravelconsult. Now the good thing about this month is that we are running a promotion, Ghana month, so hey, we are running a promotion so we all, uh, if you if there is a discount on, on the 
on the, on the on the tutorials for the proficiency exams so since the march of the, the month of march is the ghana month uh we we, we see it's, it's necessary that we give discounts to that so if you would want to register take advantage of this particular month and register with us we have offices in accra and Kumasi. Now we run both online and in-person sections for IELTS, PTE, GRE, GMAT, SAT, and then CBT as well. So when you come, we will we'll, we'll have a discussion with you to know the purpose for your test and then we will assign you to the right and then uh, the proper uh, uh, channel that you are supposed to go to in order to achieve your dreams. It is very important that we get enough information on what we have to do because information is what will draw or what will drive you to the right purpose or the or to the right place and then at the right particular at the right time so let us all have enough information on what we want to do so as i said you can log on to our website various areas that uh, we are on all the social media platforms instagram facebook and we have a whatsapp line where you can have access to this has been a very wonderful time with you lovely people and i am happy one of my students have joined me nana kusia i will definitely see you and i have some interesting tips for you <laughs> Okay, so thank you very much for today's class, uh, for today's discussion, and I hope to see you in two weeks' time, same time, same place, same channel. So please uh, make use of this month's discount, and then uh, we, are, we are also running a free session with our manager where uh, any question that you have when it comes to uh, travel, Abroad, work abroad, anything that has to do with traveling or migrating to other countries. So you can just call him and then he will have time, a one on one with you. There has been several people who have been to our offices where they, they came for all the information that they got free of charge. So just make use of that and then connect with us on all those platforms. We have our various numbers elsewhere and all the various. Uh, social media platforms and on our website as i said just log on to our website www.achilinks.com and then you get all the information that you need i'm always here to answer your questions i'm always here to uh, help you with the information that you need you can send me all the topics that you th you think or you feel uh, you're getting confused over then we will have a discussion to clarify all of that so have a wonderful moment, have a wonderful time, and enjoy yourself this particular moment. But then I would always want to say that in IELTS, you try, learn, and then practice how to speak right, how to write right, how to read right, and then how to listen right. It's very important. So have a wonderful day and enjoy yourself.